This time we're trying to make you forget who you are and where you came from. Don't let it do that. Damn! Jeffrey Thompson, house manager. Will! Oh, Bill! <laughs> Ten years is a long time. Let me show you around. Where them dimes at? Hillary! Will! <laughs> Let's go find you something fit for a prince. What do you think? I made you love. Yo, Uncle Phil! I'm glad you're safe. We'll talk later. Yo! Is this really baby Ashley? You're a long way from home, Mom. Oh, too. How you been? <laughs> you know, thriving. I hope uh, one day we can talk about why you're really here. Do you know why I'm here from Philly? Scrapping the bull court. Got nasty. Oh, do that! Was it you? Now some bad man from Philly he wanted to deal with you. Why well, move mountains to get you here? So here's the story. You came to Bel Air for a better education. Simple. Be patient. Give this a real chance. We have a different set of rules here, okay? If you want to do well, just keep your head down and follow my lead. Oh, whoa, whoa. Man, you know I'm a rep West Philly wherever I go. Yo, King, what's up, man? No love. Look around. These are my people. What? From now on, steer clear. Welcome to Bel Air. What the hell is my life? Yo, chill out, bro. Maybe Will just isn't cut out for this. Why are we working so hard to save a boy who doesn't want to be saved? Because we owe it to him. A real man takes responsibility for his actions. A real man knows when to let go of his pride and make the most out of a second chance. Be the Will who charmed West Philly with his talent and swag. Let the music diffuse all attention. Where did you? There she is. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yes, I was like, hang on, this is not the layout that I expected. Hi. Hello. You just you just forgot today. about someone, hey, Quinny. I didn't forget well, nobody. I didn't forget you didn't nobody. Forget nobody. I, I, I brought it's a different kind this. of stream. It's a holiday stream today. <laughs> yeah. Holidays yeah. for some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Look, if you Holidays, weren't part of the, congratulations. If you weren't part of the uh, rest of the Australian working class that took off these days between two long weekends, it's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I refuse to go. Like, yeah, no, no, no. This is fine. Two long weekends in a row, and they were like, "Yeah, you should come into work." I'm like, "No, no one's <laughs> going into work between two long weekends. What are you, an idiot?" Mm. Anyway, well, I am the happy Easter. Who forgot to book those off. Um, <laughs> but now he's probably going to be taking them off anyway due to health issues. So fucking sick tits. Yes. Did you did you have an accident with the Easter bunny, Quinny? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. And that is precisely how I got the infection. So um and so let's, Quinny let's wipes his ass with the rabbit. <laughs> So no, that's a no. You don't know how, that's right. how you, no, no, I, I'm sorry. I feel bad. Um, so yeah, the, at the moment I can tell that there's a little bit of a lag. Um, see, sure. <laughs> I can tell because uh, there's a yeah. long pause between anything that I say and anything that you react to. Yeah, it's your. It's, a, it's just. I was going to say it's a lag on your end. I'm just going to blame you. You're having a terrible time. Jill and I, perfect creatures, wonderful specimens. Yep. Everything is great <laughs> out of here. Um, I don't know. I yeah, seem I to be the you. only one in uh, in 780p. <laughs> <laughs> well, the funny thing is, from my perspective, I look like I'm set, fucking 1080. I'm looking great. Ooh. You're looking good, Jill. <laughs> Unfortunately, Dion's looking a little bit pixelated, but that's okay. This is also uh, great content for a podcast. 
no. Look, you but know, we if only you care about our online viewers. Yeah, oh. it's oh. absolutely. <laughs> Ow. Oh. <laughs> I did Ow. sanitize my Easter eggs. I just used the wrong part of me to do so. Um. <laughs> Ew. This is, this is terrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, you're worried, you're what are we about talking about? Video this content. Uh, the monarchy. <laughs> <laughs> Are we? That's not what I thought we were covering in this one. Uh, but, you know, no. cool. No, you told me I had to watch that Prince thing, so I watched The Crown and all of Prince Andrew's court cases. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, wow, we're going there. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that's the Prince I had to watch, right? <laughs> Straight into the politics, Dan. I appreciate it. It's good. It's good. Fair enough. And yes. <laughs> and my apologies if I am uh, channeling Max Headroom. I bit, 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 get, 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 die, bah, bah, die. don't care. Sorry. Um, <laughs> right. What is it actually? It's a show called Bel Air, not Bel End. <laughs> like these two guys. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Ow. It's no, true. It's... look, I had okay. Hmm? I, I had I had to say, on, I had to say, Quinny, I had to say, Quinny, when you had told me of this uh, particular show, and you were like, "Hey, you should check out Bel Air. Maybe we could do Bel Air." I was like, "You're a Bel End. Why the fuck would I <laughs> want to watch a show about an old show?" That wasn't particularly good in the nineties. That I now oh, have to come wash back because they're mouth out. It, 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 <laughs> Therein lies the, the, the kicker. Me. If you loved it in the nineties, how are you going to react to it now? Yeah, okay, but um, I have to admit it. It was better than I had expected, and I should I shall eat my large bowl of crow. Um, it it was wor it was worthy of my time, Quinny, which is not what I can say about a fair few things. Considering some of the shit that we have been watching of late, and some yeah. of the, some of the shit that I also watched over this long weekend while being unwell on the couch, I'm looking at you, Moonfall. Yes, you. <laughs> you watched Moonfall. Why? I was bored. <laughs> but why? Actually, Quinny, you can answer me a question because I'm never going to watch Moonfall. But can can okay. you just tell me, in the end, does the moon crack open and it's actually an egg full of a giant monster? No, that happened in Doctor uh, Who. Yeah, <laughs> yes. That did happen in Doctor Who. It's not dissimilar in Moonfall. Fuck, does a giant monster come out of the moon or not? Like, just tell me yes. that. Yes, there okay. is a giant is it... swirly monster that comes out of the moon. Um, uh, no, 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 but... no, no, no. It's got to have shape and form. It can't just be a cloud. Like, oh, I'm going to... Oh, no, no. I'm oh, sorry, now. but it's very definitely just a cloud. Um, oh, yeah. fuck that. Fuck the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want a cloud monster anymore. It's like, ooh, I'm a weird cloud. It's like, oh, fuck. I you, you couldn't care. Uh, the committee didn't, didn't come up with anything. Anyway, uh, is there a cloud in Bel Air? <laughs> um, uh, possibly hanging over some of the characters. Oh. <laughs> Fair enough. Let's go. What do you think, Jill? Is there a cloud in Bel Air? Oh man. Um. <laughs> okay, so Bel Air is actually a really great show. <laughs> and if you enjoyed yeah. Fresh Prince, I think you might like a different take on the concept it's definitely uh more contemporary uh talks about a lot of issues that are current and not so much a comedy anymore as much of a drama yeah yeah i got i kind of got interested in it because of its genesis as to as to how the show came about um yeah so it uh, oh, i'm not entirely sure when it actually came was made um, I, I think, think it was pre-pandemic. The um, I think twenty nineteen. Yeah, the teaser thing. Yeah. So, I'll, so what I'm I'm actually going to uh, just play it in the background while we're talking. Um, so uh, basically, yeah, in twenty nineteen, 
uh, a filmmaker made a, I, I guess, a short film. See, for some reason, yeah. This is, I mean, um, this is not a game that no. was intended as kind of a proof of concept. Look yeah. at you. And yeah, uh, it it started doing oh, the rounds on the internet. People were like, "Oh, because Uncle Bill oh, called in a favor. shit." Okay, that's interesting. You know the the kind of modern take on things. This one, I almost I almost wish they'd gone a little bit more in this direction. Just mm -hmm. in this feels a little more gritty. Yeah. Um, like. But then again, you know, it's it's a it's a TV network. They're going to put money into things in a certain way. Um, but yeah, essentially made a short film, um, put it up as a trailer, and then what happened, Jill? Uh, well, it got the attention of Will Smith, who was the original creator of Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Um, and I, he just really dug it and was like, I, you know what? Let's do it. Let's actually make this a show. Um, so, yeah. yeah, we got the the gritty reboot of uh, Fresh Prince in the form of Bel Air. Yeah. Mm. And, I mean, I, it's funny. Like, you look at this and you can see all the elements of where they were going with the, the new series, but just a kind of different take on it. Um, and then you get to the, the, the series itself and it's, yeah, it, I really enjoy it. And this is why I was kind of pushing everybody to watch it or, or at least for us to talk about it. Cause I was like, yeah, huh. nice. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, it, it look at what people can do. Yeah. It, Sorry, it reminds me a little bit of the, um, the Mortal Kombat thing, the film. Exactly. Um, where someone came up with a proof of concept, said, hey, we can make some interesting, uh, uh, carry on some interesting narratives from, you know, some of this nostalgic stuff. And I kind of really enjoyed the fact that it wasn't just a, hey, do you remember the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? We're going to rehash the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air ad nauseum mm. without anything interesting to say about, anything at all we're just going to like you're going to watch it because you liked that this one i kind of really enjoyed that it, it sucker punched me a little bit by going this is not the same sort of thing to show this is a this is a straight up drama you know this is a interpersonal relationships and this is a classist example um show yeah. And I, I like, you know, it, like economic disparity in the US, uh, how all, also what it is to grow up uh, in two different worlds in the US. And yeah. you know, I, I like From that. a black like, I mean, perspective as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, and I was just kind of like, this has actually got something to say and all credit to it. I was like, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was like, I remember watching the trailer and thinking, shit, I would watch that show. Yeah, and then I was like, "Oh shit, I can watch that show." Yeah, then it came true. Yeah, uh, yeah. Good, good point. Good point there from Predic Anger, who said in the chat, he just said, "Bel Air is to Fresh Prince as Breaking Bad is to Malcolm in the Middle." <laughs> uh, <laughs> you've said it better than I could. There you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, I'm down yeah. for that. Oz eighty nine made a good point that it is. Um, where was it? I just missed it. Oh God! Pretty impressive to get a, a job from about oh, the Riverdale, the Riverdale take on Fresh Prince, and I'm like, yes, yes. But I never <laughs> watched River. I never watched Riverdale because I never. It's the thought sexy I, version. I know. Yeah, but I mean, when I think about like Archie and Jughead and Veronica and Betty, it's always nice yeah. and quaint to leave them in the cartoon world. I don't want to see oh. Jughead get his jugs off, like. Sorry, yeah, it's the, the, it's the Gen Smith. Z version. Gen Z version of your old favourite. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I look, think I mean, Kevin I, Smith I, in, in Chasing Amy where there's that line, <laughs> Archie is not sure. fucking Mr. Weatherby. <laughs> <laughs> he could be. He could um, be, yeah. Did yeah. I, but, I mean, I, hey, all I, all I need to know about Riverdale is does Jughead still love hamburgers and want to eat them? I don't know. 
I don't know. You know, no. See, like that does, no, that's just like that's it. just not true to character. And also in this <laughs> one, the guy's not a rapper, is he? <laughs> no. No, no. So what? yes, I saw that. I saw that. Quick. I'm not going to dignify that with an with a comment. <laughs> <laughs> Can't just say say that and and expect me to just acknowledge it. Anyway, yep. yeah. Um. Cool. Did you did it? Did anyone have a bad time with this? With this one, I had ups and downs with the series. To mm. be honest, um, look, yeah. I noticed we haven't given a synopsis, but I'm pretty sure everybody knows the theme song and can just apply it to this show <laughs> okay. because it's that same oh, the thing. synopsis is now running at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, but the, it the is exactly the synopsis show. is tiny. Um, yeah. The journey of a street smart man whose life is forever transformed when he moves to the streets of West Philadelphia to live with his relatives in one of LA's wealthier suburbs. Just listen to the Will Smith song again. Yeah, <laughs> it'll yeah. it'll do ya. That'll be fine. It's the same. It's the same thing as Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> you know, if you listen to yeah. their theme song, you get and uh, you, you don't have to do any exposition about who are they and what are they doing. Same thing with yeah. Fresh Prince to Bel Air. It's, exactly. like, it's in, in the, the song, song, guys. Just watch <laughs> the song. <laughs> you know, even Full House got that right because it, you know, kind of explained a few things. Did it? Because all I can remember is, ah. Uh... No, but anywhere you go, anywhere you, you're all together. Like, that's the kind of thing. Oh, what's another show? All together now. Like, Neighbours, you know, yeah. it's Neighbours. <laughs> Because, yep. you know, home and away doesn't really make sense because they never no. go away. They're just at home. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the idea of the uh, CW doing a sexy Beverly Hillbillies reboot, though. I think that needs to happen. <laughs> mm, I want to, yeah, I want to see, I want to see that update. Yeah, what's the Gen Z version of <laughs> the Hillbillies? <laughs> the Hillbillies. <laughs> uh, Beverly Hill, they, they moved, they moved to Beverly and then start running meth. Yeah, <laughs> hillbilly, <laughs> hillbilly yeah. heroin. <laughs> you know? Oh no! Actually, you you could do a really good Beverly Hillbillies, except where they started off as an extraordinarily rich um, oil tycoon family, and then lose all their money where their wells start running dry, and they have to turn to renewables, but they can't oh, pivot. No. So suddenly they're actually poor. <laughs> so See? reverse there hillbilly. Yeah, reverse yeah, exactly. Hillbilly. Goody, that is that is just Shit's Creek. <laughs> oh shit! God oh, damn it! Shit. You're right. They already did it. Fuck. <laughs> they already they already did it with Shit's Creek, including the crazy God grandma. <laughs> okay, so back to Bel Air. Yes. yes. I. <laughs> You're home to Bel Air. <laughs> yeah. I was digging the concept. I did find that there were a few stumbling blocks throughout the series that was kind of like pushing me out of the story a little bit. Mm. Can um, I take a, a guess on one of them? Sure. Is it the influencer storyline? No. Oh. Actually, it was the stuff about Carlton. Oh. Yeah, oh, it was basically the character of Carlton was kind of um, throwing me out of the story a little bit. Um, there was, for, they kind of built the show around the relationship of Will and Carlton as like a rivalry. Um, it was definitely a, an enemies to brothers kind of storyline that was happening. Um, but yeah. a lot of the stuff that, uh, they made his Carlton's character do just didn't vibe with me. Um, the stuff where he's like, sucking up to the white people at school and letting them get away with, um, I guess you'd call it like racial injustice and doing, um, not they're not even designer drugs, but like just, you know, Adderall, snorting Adderall and shit like that. And I didn't like the direction that they went with his character. I yeah, I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I kind of got that a little bit too because, 
what, what's the, what's the easiest way to to uh, have people in a sitcom is to make stereotypes of certain mm. types of people. And in this one, they were just yeah. like, oh, they're complicated. But I also had that thing of, but why are they complicated? Yeah, like, he didn't really have a personality to back up any of the choices that his character made. It was just all very yeah. much like, oh, here's his father that is like, you know, running for district attorney and is very high profile. And then here's his son that for no specific reason has a lot of trouble trying to live up to that um, uh, image of his father. But the, for some reason they're in a very privileged family so there's not really any kind of case to make him be that troubled, if you know what I mean. It's like yeah, how I, is I, there I, any it, pressure on this kid to perform when he's got all of this privilege and thrown into these like upper crust schools and nobody's really pressuring him to do anything. I would argue yeah, the, the the point against that, that he does also say that he suffers pretty badly from anxiety. Um, and even yep. though it's, it is referenced that, you know, he's doing a lot of drugs and stuff like that, I kind of yeah. thought that if they were actually addressing the like actual mental health issues and saying, you know, for him anxiety is a real problem, and, you know, that makes his life really difficult. I would have liked them to have done more of it. But I... I, I That's the problem. Like the they never character. they never explored his anxiety as the, as the reason for his issues. It was a, mm. you know, just a tell, not show kind of moment again. It's like, oh, he, oh, he's got anxiety. But we never find out about it until, like, he's at a breaking point and admits it to somebody. In a moment of like <laughs> vulnerability, yeah, he's just been yeah. like clouded as this asshole character from the get go. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, for your gold star of troubled teen high school um, show, Euphoria does it way better. Um, I thought you were going to say Degrassi. <laughs> no, no, Degrassi is a pinnacle achievement by all of humankind, yeah. probably. Um, next to around the twist, but um, we, <laughs> we, yeah, I kind of have that sort of thing where I was like, I don't really give a shit about ninety nine percent of the people in this place because I hate everyone in Bel Air immediately, and I, but I do like Will. Um, they don't give you any opportunity to like yeah. these characters. There's no character exploration of anybody. It's just mm. you're kind of thrown into this situation in Will's just, shoes, but, like, yeah. he hasn't seen them for 10 years. So, yeah, yeah there's yeah. no yeah, context there's yet, for who these people yet are. Yet they're still kind of close because they did hang out and stuff. Like, I always felt that there weren't enough stakes in in the the show on on like Will's uncle's family. I can't remember what's his uncle's name again. Um, Phil. Phil. Uncle Phil. Phil. Yes, I, yeah, I know. But <laughs> Phil and Will and Bill and Skill and Neil and, uh, and the, the two on. twins, <laughs> Phil, Phil and Will. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and Jeffrey. <laughs> Jeffrey. Yeah, I'm um, sorry. I fucking love Jeffrey. Jeffrey's oh, no, man. Jeffrey. Yeah. I will, I will yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. go to war for Jeffrey with Jeffrey. Jeffrey, Jeffrey is they my gave, guy. They gave Jeffrey like the amped up um, Alfred Pennyworth treatment of like, oh yeah, he's a oh, yeah. badass like ex merc that's like working for a family now as a butler. <laughs> yeah. um, but like, I always feel like if they could have just given us an idea that Phil was like, I don't know, a bad comment or something like a, a half a second away from losing everything and that his family would end up going back to being, you know, some sort of, like there was never any stakes in this. It was always kind of like, ah, yeah. oh. um, you know. Well, the stakes really did come. I, I, they I came very I, late. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I think the stakes came, but also I think that, that to me that was the, the kind of point of the, the this first series was to go, okay, here they are in their perfect, you know, untouched uh, Bel Air perfection. And mm -hmm. then the whole series is about, okay, let's peel off a few things here and there. Let's find out that Phil, who looks like he is, you know, such a great guy and everything like that, is an asshole, is capable of being controlling and manipulative of his wife, is, um, you know, really not the good kind of guy that he says that he is. Um, 
And then, you know, each of the characters, I think the whole point of that first season is, is pulling apart the characters and finding all those bits. So by the end of the first season, I, I kind of felt like, okay, well, I now know who they are. Yeah. Yeah, I and, agree. Like by the end of the season, yes, but I don't think that it should have taken that long for us to to like the characters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, agreed. <laughs> it's, it's, um, but but also like I was I was into it from the start. I don't know. There's something about the actor who plays Carlton that I was like, I don't like him. He's a complete dick, but no, I enjoy watching him. Yeah, by the end, when they did break him down quite a bit, I was like, okay, this is what I wanted to see from the beginning. I wanted to see his raw edges, and now I'm finally connecting with this character. It was great. But someone that I did enjoy from the the get-go was Aunt Viv. I liked her character a lot. Yeah. I think she yeah. she kind of wore her heart on her sleeve a lot of it, you know. Um, from the original, she was the one that connected with Will the most. And um, I think she's definitely the more open-minded of um, the family members and was definitely very accepting and nurturing for Will. Um, and I liked how her story progressed. I liked that, you know, she got to come out of the shadows of her husband and um, take a bit of agency back for life. Yeah, which is a, mm. is a nice storyline for her because it... I, I can't remember um, Aunt Viv from the 90s show. Like, I know she was there, but I oh. cannot remember. Any, was she an artist in that? I don't recall. <laughs> hmm. I, feel like, I feel like I'm at a fucking Senate inquiry. I don't recall. <laughs> I don't remember that. But she was, she was the... Recall. I'll have to take that on notice. She was progressive in the couple and Phil was the stuffy one. So she was always the one that was like, oh, well, you know, the kids want to do this. Let's let them do that. And, yeah, this yeah. this Viv is definitely the same. Mm. And I like that, yeah. you know, they've, they've deepened the characters because in, in the original 90s series, Uncle Phil, as you say, was essentially just a stereotype. He was a... Yeah. A big fat man who'd get angry at Will and yell and then at the end of the episode would go, I'm angry at you because this. And that was that was the depth of his character. <laughs> yeah. yes. And then we all learn and we all make mistakes and we know how to like act and do things. In this <sighs> one, it doesn't really feel like that's the like, you know, it was sitcom format. And yeah, that is yeah. it so is it's always an a moral thing. Always a moral at the end of the episode. Yeah. In this one, it it just sort of feels like it's it's not real. Like it's totally the separate format. Like I, I feel weird mm. they're trading on it as the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, and then they come back and like. By the way, it's hour long episode. They hour long. I think they feel like hour long. Like forty five minutes. Episodes. I think yeah. 40, yeah, forty five minute episodes. It's long form episode television nowadays. It's a whole sort of thing, and it just I I was trying to, and I have to admit, I haven't seen to the end, so. You know, you don't have to oh, worry okay. about that. Yeah. Okay, right. That just, okay, just yeah, I haven't, didn't make it all the way through, yes. Um, but I, I always kind of was like, okay, so what's the point of the show? Like, is the point of the show that they're going to make it out so that we see Will grow up and then go back to Philly and take out the drug lord that was that had pissed him How off? How far did you get, Dave? Find out what... Hey? How far did you uh, get? Look, enough to have a conversation about it. But don't ask me specific. But don't ask me specifics, Quinny, because okay. I I don't recall. I'll have to take that on notice. Um, right. <laughs> but yeah, like I, they're, they're, okay, there may be something in there that I have accidentally speed bumped over. Um, no, that's okay. But, yeah. just, just it's important to, to know how far you you know in terms of storyline because, like the. I was surprised that the whole, you know, dangerous thing back in Philly was kind of dealt with, you know, within the first five or six episodes, I think. Like, wow. yeah. Then it sort of became a, oh, well, the the danger is gone and now it's a, a debate between Will and himself on, like, what kind of life does he want to lead now? Does he want to stay in this privileged 
uh, life that he's been invited into or does he want to go uh, back to the fewer uh, opportunities that he had? And also, like, there's that great tension between his mum and his aunt. Like, and, and yeah. there's some fucking massive history there that, mm. you know, his, his mum wants the best for him and is willing to do anything to protect him, but then always assumes that he's going to come back. Yeah, she doesn't but want him not. to have everything at the cost of their relationship, which mm. I find a little bit selfish on her part. Yeah. And there seems and like to be that. like a bit of a history of like jealousy with her sister as well because the sister got all the stuff that she didn't get and now, yeah, she's not getting any credit for raising a raising her son. As I said, the, yeah. the, show is, the show is very smart. Like I like that it did more than what you would expect a superficial mm. nostalgic remake to do and that's why I was kind of like, actually, it's really worth checking out. Yeah. To mine. It's mine anyway. I I love that it, it what could so easily just be a shitty remake or and mm. and could have gone down the path of another you know how I met your father and uh no. you know fucking <laughs> I am watching that but it's definitely a very guilty pleasure show because full it's of the house. <laughs> yeah, full of, I was gonna say full of house Quinny. There you go. You know, well, there are so many ways to could have again. gone. <laughs> and this is the one that goes, oh, okay, we can actually ask some interesting questions and and pull on some really fucking heavy duty threads in terms of race and and mm -hmm. you know, um like you get the distinct feeling that even though these are these are incredibly rich people, that being on the wrong side of the cops is still a dangerous thing. Yeah. Like you know, and and you, Will could be pulled over, even though he's driving a fucking brand new Lexus or whatever the hell it is. And yeah, but that doesn't mean he didn't steal it, according to, you know. <laughs> exactly, and I you love that America. it's got those kind of states. Mm. Mm. Yeah, this is yeah. America, isn't it? Mm, so, were yeah. there characters that you enjoyed more than others? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I already pointed out that I liked Viv's character. Um, Hillary, for me, was a little bit hit and miss. She definitely has a lot more depth than original Hillary. <laughs> original Hillary was so... I don't remember so, original Hillary at all. She was so vapid. Like, she was all about being seen. Definitely, like, of the influencer generation, like, before her time, but with none of the activists behind it. Like, um, it was all very superficial. So the new Hillary is still an influencer, but she's actually, you know, got passion in what she's doing, but, you know, trying to get famous from it, which I don't know is completely virtuous. But, you know, she's trying to, to build a brand and, you know, make her own money away from her father's money. And I found some of her choices uh, strange. Yeah. But also, you know, I could kind of get where she's coming from. But I do feel like the one person that got done dirty was Ashley. Big time. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Big time. I mean, <sighs> the whole point of this show from the original series was a fish out of water you know, trying to teach a very snooty family, like, how to connect to their culture. And in this, we get Will interacting with very few family members, and one of them, I don't think I ever saw them in a scene together unless the whole family was there, was with Ashley. And it was kind of yeah. sad because he was a character that they were giving, um, you know, a queer storyline to, and it kind of only happened for half an episode. Yeah, in terms of queer baiting and everything and, and kind of like paying lip service, I was just like, oh, mm. come on. Yeah. <laughs> what do you expect? They had a lot of other things to do. There was a lot of other multi-level storylines that were going through. Oh, I mean, this if anybody could have had a queer storyline, it would have been Carlton because he was so obviously queer in the first series. And then, well, I mean, the original series. And then 
to go into this and have a very straight Carlton and, you know, also not like a, we- a into... weirdly athletic and popular Carlton to me was weird. <laughs> Yeah. Like I was just kind of like, this is a different kind of Carlton than also, but also, yeah, he had the right amount of douche, but in this one, it was like he's an evil douche. Whereas, yeah, in the original, it was just like he's just a dickhead who doesn't have any idea about how ninety five percent of people live or should live. Yeah, it's, it's just like the rich bro. It was like, God, I hate that person. But in this one, it was just sort of like, oh, he's kind of evil. He's manipulative. Mm, yeah, yeah. I think that's the reason why he let. Um, a lot of people take liberties with him at school was so he could gain a social standing, yeah, but not in the right way. Do you feel, do you feel like he was the kind of kid that would just keep a book of every sort of weird or terrible? Oh, thing he's got the burn book, him? so yeah. so that in the <laughs> he's future, he's Regina he, George, <laughs> yeah, no, but he'd be like in the future, he'll just be like, Oh, I see that you're now a like shipping company magnate. Well, I need you to do this, or I'm going to expose the fact, oh, that, yeah, you know. You did this to me in the school locker room. Oh yeah, that um, kind of thing. Freddie Kanga brings up the thing that they never did resolve the whole kind of backpack thing. So in what is it, yeah. episode two or something? There's there's this whole thing of drugs being planted on Will, and I was really disappointed at how badly they ended that storyline because, <laughs> mm. like, the show up until that point had been kind of, you know, looking like it was it was it had a bit of balls to it. It was trying to say something new it had like the characters had a bit of bite and everything and that one where there could have been some really interesting stuff about you know police in schools um drugs in schools and and you know the the difference between what it means to be white rich and privileged and black rich and privileged you know Mm. all of that would have been really interesting but it kind of just got oh somebody just came in and (laughs) under the rug (laughs) yeah yeah so, yeah. Well, maybe that's how it works in the ultra wealthy privileged schools where they're like, oh, no, we've just found mass trafficking quantities of drugs. Do, 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 do. Don't ruin the reputation of the institution. And we all know how that works out. <laughs> yes. It's very true. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, anyway, um, I also did not like um, Ashley. Uh, sorry, Hillary. Not, no. Actually, it wasn't. Hillary. I mean, Hillary. Hillary's uh, character to me mm. was just annoying because I don't connect with the idea of influences, or like I find it difficult to connect with the idea of constant um, uh, content delivery through that kind of way. So I just can't connect with it because I can't really do it. What do you it. mean? He you don't, you don't a, connect with us making content weekly he's, all the time? He said he's yes, but like yeah, he says understanding that he's on a live stream talking to the internet <laughs> and that whatever I say here will follow me no matter where I go. Um, but, yeah, the whole idea of just doing it constantly from your lounge room or your, you know, uh, uh, kitchen or walking around or doing things and, and in, engaging in that sort of thing is like, watch my life. It's more interesting than your life. Um, and then by trying to give her the complicated thing of wanting to, you know, cook food especially a particular way um only yeah. because you know as everyone knows yeah wanting to be a chef or wanting to be able to cook is absolutely amazing but people look like shit doing it like you are not a glamorous coutured person so making that's not food. yes but also i'll tell that to the team of 400 people behind nigella making her look that way um not someone holding up a live stream camera like a phone going oh here's just me baking something <laughs> so tasty it's like that's just weird anyway uh, i found it strange how they flip-flopped with the way that she was trying to get you know influencer famous like yeah it kind of started out with like oh i have this amazing cooking channel and now i'm trying to get like a restaurant deal or a book deal with like a company to do recipes but they're not into it so now i'm going to move into an influencer house to build a brand and um i'm not getting enough traction now for these guys so i'm going to do a post in my lingerie but then i'm going to flip flop on that and i don't want to do that anymore so i'm going to leave the house and oh it it got a bit annoying it got annoying but also to me it it did that criminal thing of 
being somebody writing about shit that they've never actually engaged with. <laughs> and, you know, to, to anyone who's working in the influencer sort of market or whatever, mm. like that all sounds like, and then the influencer does this, and then the influencer goes, ooh, must do sexy. And and it's like yeah, it, it was old tropey storylines with a veneer of modern, you know, stuff and the the yeah. bad guy who's in charge of the house you know may have been fucking twirling his mustache it was just yes. so obvious yes like you know they what? don't realize because... that the... no godi oh so i was gonna say it's, i think it's honestly because no one understands how influencers or social media <laughs> work and how people make money not even writers who are working within this kind of like, you don't understand how it works. Sometimes shit just sticks. You do stuff until shit sticks. That's the thing. Like consistency is key. And like Hillary going back and forth and trying all of these different things is not going to help with her traction. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, he's evil, but he's right. She has to boast. (laughs) Otherwise her numbers will go down. But also, yeah, yeah, it did feel. I also didn't like the male fem- female dynamic in that as well that felt like a bit dirty and maybe they could have addressed that differently it started to get a little bit predatory for me and then they didn't address it as such um so yeah didn't really like the way they handled that influencer house thing what do you reckon season two she starts selling feet pics on only fans <laughs> 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 there oh, we go. shit. I think Quinny's frozen. God damn it. Yep. Oh, no. He's, <laughs> oh, back, oh, he's back. He's back. <laughs> I'm sorry. My internet although, just moment. Although, surprisingly, Quinny, you look, you're looking much better on my screen now. So, there we are. <laughs> Something happened. Well, I, I mentioned know. feet. I mentioned feet pics and OnlyFans, and suddenly the internet's like, oh, quick, more bandwidth to Quinny. Um, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I am the, the we need to form. see that. <laughs> we I'll need to see it. that. So, Credit yeah, Kanga makes a good Quinny's point feet. that, yeah, mm. being mm. a sex positive influencer, but then having the video posted without cons- uh, without consent. Yeah, that was the problematic thing for me, that the influencer house was starting to feel predatory and they didn't address it. They just like, yeah. oh, I'm mm. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to leave. Yeah. yeah. And, I, like, and but my way out like, of it is let's to talk work about- with somebody else. I know. It's like, let's talk about why you're leaving. And now this guy wants to extort you for money. Let's talk about why that's a bad thing. Not just like, yeah. don't tell mum and dad. I'm like, oh my yeah. God, Hillary, are you trying to be an adult or what? Let's yeah. let's talk about how that would actually go down in a real world situation where she would immediately turn the camera on live and go, hey fam, this guy's exploiting me. Mm. <laughs> and yeah. Suddenly. And, and he's a terrible dude and you should avoid him. And then that's just exactly how it goes. Oh, I'd hope yeah, that exactly. it would go that way. Um, yeah. But also, I'm so all like off that uh, like concept of like, oh, there's actually an influencer house, and you go there to influence harder. Have you um, watched Byron Bay's? Fuck off! No, I never would. And if I because see one while I'm, if thing. I see one, if yeah, I see one while I'm up here, I will definitely not be going to engage with them at all. Um, yeah. yeah, influencer houses are a thing, actually. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm trying to remember there I mean, was another show that I saw that on. I can't remember what it was now. But but that's just, just like an influencer house to me is just what was it, like jo- Jersey Shore or Big Brother. Like mm. why would you put a bunch of egomaniacal dickheads in a room and expect people to, ah, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. No, I see. <laughs> I see. People are idiots. Mm, yes. Yeah. Yeah. There is a character we haven't mentioned at all yet, um, and one that I would like to to uh, flag. Um, jazz. Uh, jazz. Yes. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> I like. I like jazz. jazz. I like jazz. jazz. <laughs> He's like. I would have liked him to have been used more. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like he kind of came in and out occasionally um and i would have liked yeah. to have seen more well, storyline for him but he's still cool I, yeah I he was him. a great great sidekick character that you know mm. actually did stuff um which was great and mm. you know kind of i want to see good things for jazz i'm like please don't settle for hillary like <laughs> she's not treating you right jazz she's not treating you right <laughs> yeah yeah he you can do better 
actually there was the other character was um the the friend back in philly and that led to oh, yeah. a couple of really heavy duty episodes and mm. i mean we've talked about all the other sort of side characters but the lead actor who's playing the the character of will um mm. he's fucking great oh yeah um like he is essentially so Jabari Banks is, is the actor's name. Um, he's almost doing an impression of Will Smith. Almost. Yeah, but, like, not an on-the-nose impression. No. And and I think he is, he's got the emotional range to mm. really hold a series, which is fucking impressive, like, because he's young. Yeah, like he does the drama really well, but then you see these moments where he kind of like lets go and it's like, oh, this is Will being Will. Like this is mm. who he truly is, his personality in the sense of like the lightheartedness and the joking around and the having fun kind of Will. And I liked seeing the two sides of him in this show. Yeah, yeah. And I could I could very easily imagine him actually fitting into a a sitcom style of this because yeah. he's got, he's got good comedic chops, but um, yeah, no, I, I really enjoy him. And towards the end of the season, there's um, introduction. And I don't know whether we'll talk about, whether we talk about this in a spoiler section, um, but there's an introduction of a character who is really important. And mm -hmm. you're like, there are some scenes in that, that I was like, fuck, this is, this is good better than good tv this is great tv yeah so yeah i and i do i like I, I want to talk about that mm. I'm, I'm cool uh, like i mean i like i get on that too i i kind of want to see a, a spin-off buddy cop uh series with jazz and jeffrey um, <laughs> oh, okay. yeah so i would just like i would like to put both of them together like you know the hard as nails like guy and the street smart guy and i was kind of like there is there is definitely a buddy cop in there for that like you know i, I love that jeffrey needs... is essentially like the um the mini me version of idris elba um oh yeah. well there was like the first episode where will shows up and he's like okay idris <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah, I kind of like that. That that's a that's a little head cannon that I wanted. But yeah, I, honestly, yeah, <laughs> I thought the the guy playing Will was great. You know, mm -hmm. did a great yeah. job with it. Knew exactly, and I think it felt like he knew exactly what he was meant to do as that character. Yeah, yeah. It, it feels like I believed he was from the street, and he was uncomfortable in this incredible kind of wealth and and rarefied atmosphere that he knows that he's incredibly lucky to be there. And that's a hard thing to, to translate, mm. you know. Yeah, but also, like, he's, he's also looking at it going, I'm incredibly lucky to be here, but holy shit, there are some big problems with all of this. <laughs> like, yeah. all of this is a huge problem. And at least that's, mm. you know, something that we can, you know, take good uh, lessons from, like, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, there's also Will's love interest, who I really enjoyed because um, it was fucking lovely seeing somebody on screen who wasn't, um, you know, stick thin. Yes, for body diversity. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, oh, oh, yes. Finally, here's a character who is, you know, attractive and, and really interesting. It's got a lot going on, but also is not you know, your typical Hollywood um, build. I was just like, oh, fucking great. Thank you. Yeah. More of that, please. Yeah, it was nice. It made a nice difference. Uh, well, we've all almost run out of time. Like, I was going to say, we've for a long, long fucking time. We, we should. Um, so let's do a quick rating and we'll, we'll then come mm. back um, and do a very short spoiler section because I don't know that there's a huge amount that we need to cover. Um but um, yes, and I may well be the love interest for season two. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, ratings. Give us give us your numerical mm. score, my lovely people. It's a tricky gonna, one, I know. Mm, I'm going to give it a seventy. Straight up seventy. Um, 
Yeah, just, just a 70. <laughs> so there's a bit of a pregnant pause there. It was like 70. No, just 70. Just 70. Zero. Okay. Yeah. Just 70. I, I did really start to enjoy it towards the end. Um, I mean, I had its moments where, like, some of the acting was a little Riverdale-esque, um, <laughs> but none of them were moments that included um, the Will character. I thought um, some of the other younger characters, character interactions were a little bit eh but um mm. and uh, it was hard to get on board with some of the characters from the beginning but towards the end of the show I really enjoyed it and I would definitely watch a season two if that was to yeah, come right. out yeah would you also recommend other mm. people watch it I think so I'm like hey did you enjoy Fresh Prince of Bel-Air it's like do you like gritty reboots then this is the show for you <laughs> It yeah, it had right. its moments, and I I don't know. I think I think mm. people could get on board with this show. Nice, Dion. I look. I would have headed towards the eighty, but I'm going to come down to probably about seventy five. Not because yeah. I didn't have a good time with it. I just felt like it. It's landed at a strange time in interesting teen television drama that is currently out there. Um, I feel like it's really it's really run a pr- like against, as I said earlier, like Euphoria as a problem. Um, yeah. I feel like that they're, they're, match- they're kind of matched shows, but Euphoria has done a little bit better with the a lot weird, like a lot more outlandish concept, but a lot more uh, focus on the characters because in Bel Air, as you said, some people have gotten a bit lost. Some of the characters mm. have gotten a bit defocused and you just don't, I don't quite, and you're not really explained the the stuff behind some of the characters that you want some explanation about. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Um, but also, yeah, look, as something that I had dismissed offhand by going, Jesus Christ, why are they making another piece of shit? Uh, can't they come up with something? And, and I believe the, <laughs> the other thing would have been, Jesus Christ, Quinny, why are you making me watch this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, that's why I make me watch this. Uh, I think it, it does have some interesting things to say. And I like that they're really pushing towards the, you know, wealth inequality um, and what that and what money does to people um, in America. And just that kind of stuff is really actually quite interesting. Um and also seeing a different, seeing it made by people for other people um, is great because you get to experience more diversity in your viewing pleasure. So, yeah, it's good. I'd recommend it. Be like, yeah, you should watch Bel Air. You might learn something. You might actually mm. like it. Um, yeah. nice. You could actually hate hate it, but then you can go back to watching John claude Van Damme roundhouse kick people in the face. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> As I do also. <laughs> you can always go back to John claude Van Damme. Um, sure. I'm going to go a little higher just because I, I found myself really invested in it and have had, <laughs> I had a wonderful conversation with one of the guys at work, um, one of the paramedic uh, lecturers that works there, where we spent the best part of an hour just going, what about this character? What do you think is going to happen next season? What about <laughs> all these characters? And what did you think about this? No, I didn't really buy into that. But yeah, and and I was like, shit, I apparently have a lot of opinions about this um, and have gotten invested in it. And by the end of the season, I was, I was on board with the relationship between Will and Carlton. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like there, there have been, there's been enough shit and enough water under the bridge for that mm. to now have value. Yes, some yeah. characters do unfortunately get fucking left well and truly behind. Um, and I hope that they give them more to do in season two. Um, yeah. I want, like, we're talking about Jeffrey and we're like, is Jeffrey going to come back in season two? Is it, what, what, what could happen? How could they bring him back? Oh, my God. Uh. And, like, this is fucking, I shouldn't be this invested in the Fresh Prince of <laughs> Bel-Air remake this is not something <laughs> that i should be getting this involved in so for me it's an 82 um i, I really dug it and yeah cool. i mean would i recommend it to other people i made you fucking watch it so yeah <laughs> <laughs> you're home to bel-air for quinny you just want to go to bel-air yeah. don't you? you just want to go to one of those mansions you want to attend one of those those dinner parties <sighs> those pool parties and just yep. hang out with the upper crust that's what it is. man i have I've looked at that mansion and one thing that I do love about it is this mansion in this version of the show feels so 
ridiculously over the top. Like yeah. so huge, so fucking ostentatious. Sprawling. Yeah. And yeah. I, I love that. And yes, I did very happily live in it. Thank you very much. Austin Powers. <laughs> now, did, are we going to do a clip and come back as spoiler section? We are. Like, what's going to happen? Yeah. We are. Okay. All right. Let's make it real quick then. Okay. okay. Here we go. Here's, here's our clip. It was about as high as the stakes got. <laughs> yeah, admittedly. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dion. If you needed to go to the bathroom, I apologize. <laughs> No, 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 it's, it's absolutely fine. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't mind. It's just a different format. It's not how I'm usually, but also, like, it's holiday time. We're just, we're trying something yes. new here. You know? <laughs> I, I don't have to something new out of necessity. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not fearing change. I'm rolling with it, much like Bel Air. I Are we going to have a, it, no. um, a, a thirsty periodic table episode where we're all like all in our underwear? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, uh, Jill, I don't know what you think, but what? this is a thirst trap. <laughs> oh, our, current, our current format is definite. Look, it's our faces up against the screen, real close, talking directly yeah. to people. Cutting. There's a lot of people out there going, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Look, I wouldn't. I, mean, I, I, I could. I I couldn't count on two hands the amount of times people have slid into my DMs because they've <laughs> never slid into my DMs. Aww. That's okay. I'm pretty sure yeah. that there's a, a large proportion of our audience who would be more than happy for all of the beautiful women on this podcast <laughs> to do so. But there is there is a deafening silence of people saying that they want Dion and I in our um, all-togethers. Um, <laughs> in our all-togethers. Since you refer to them as all-togethers, now all I can think of you is in very long underwear that's woolen that you may show... <laughs> So you may show some ankle on the prairie occasionally uh, <laughs> whilst taking an, an unchaperoned promenade around the neighbourhood. Oh, my God, yes, Oz, and, you know, and with the little bum <laughs> flap, the escape hatch. Yes, <laughs> yes absolutely. Uh, right. Uh, um, yes, Karina, I would suggest sliding into DMs, DMs right now <laughs> just to make him feel uncomfortable. Okay, yeah, but so because I'd be like, what's, what's what's that notification? I don't know what's going on. Why am I getting a thing? It says there's a letter come in through the email. Oh, God. An <laughs> electronic letter? Ugh. Oh, yeah, Jesus. Anyway, sorry. Spoiler <laughs> section. Yes, it's spoiler. Tell me, Quinny, spoil something for me about the ending. Please don't, because, oh, okay. like, I... <laughs> well, I'd still want to okay. watch the ending. Right. So much like the uh, the original '90s uh, show, one of the big elements of the, of the story was about Will's father, um, and who he is and what he has to do in Will's life. Like there's there's a, a, a moment that pretty much everyone remembers from that the um, Will Smith one where like he's met his dad and things have gone badly, and he goes up to Aunt, Uncle Phil and he's like, "Why don't nobody want me?" And it was oh, like, oh yes, yes. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that was that was a fucking moment that everybody remembers. And in this yeah. one, Dad is also a really important character and starts to play a big kind of. He gets talked about a lot from about episode seven, I think. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, seven or eight, I don't know. And yeah, when he comes back, shit gets real. Yeah. Yeah, and, and there was a, a fantastic bit of um, dramatic acting and uh, a, a really confronting argument um, <laughs> that was just, yeah, it was phenomenal to watch and, yeah, a, a pretty great moment in the show, I think. Yeah. So um, Will's dad is played by um, a, a Wayans brother and I'm trying to remember. Yeah. <laughs> like because when, when he walks out you're like, oh, fuck, it's a Wayans. Hang on, which yeah, one? Yeah, because they all look the same, but it's not Damon. It's not. Uh, I can't remember. Yeah, it's not I'm, one I'm of the very to... well known Wayans. No, <laughs> it's one of the lesser known Wayans. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's a lesser it was Wayans. Marlon Wayans. It may well have been. I'm now trying to scroll to find. He's, him. He is listed. He is listed on the credits, so I'm gonna say. There okay, so yes. <laughs> okay, so it's Marlon yeah, yeah. Wayans, right. and and. Yeah. He's good. Like, as you say, Jill, that's that mm -hmm. scene 
and it's and it's great because it starts off kind of friendly like you know there, there's been a little bit tension. you know sizing each other up slight confrontational then you mm. know it kind of ebbs out into a reconnection and then very much very quickly just like peaks again into like a, a high crescendo of animosity it yeah and it's it's yeah fucking good tv like i was yeah. i was just on like really sat back in my chair on that one going whoa fucking hell mm. and there are a couple of other moments throughout the scene uh, throughout the season with like phil and jeffrey where i'm like yep. whoa there's some good shit happening here mm. and that's that's when i was really into the show i was like okay when when those kind of things are happening the show actually elevates above being you know and it elevates itself above the idea of just being a remake. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Unfortunately, th yeah, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that is kind of like, uh, yeah, okay. It, it's kind of like, right, fine. Yeah. It's twee. It's obvious. Yeah, but also, like, the last episode, the um... – the final confrontation with like Will and the whole family and the I feel like I don't really belong here kind of sentiment and the I got to get out, I got to go back home. I I really enjoyed where it it ended up and, mm. and where it could possibly go from there, especially with like um, Jazz coming back at the end and being that person to like ground Will again and say, hey, dude, like, You've got a whole lot of family that actually really care about you. And like they might have done some things that probably weren't kosher, but you know, they're only looking out for you. So, you know, where are you going to yeah. go from here? And it's interesting, like throughout the, the, one of the stories that I wasn't initially particularly interested in that got more interesting as it went was Phil's run at being district attorney. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if, Towards the end of the season, he eventually just goes, okay, I'm not going to do it because yeah. there is too much potential for it fucking up his whole family, basically, and bringing yeah. him undone. Yeah. And I was like, that was an interesting choice, mm. you know, but there, because of that, there's this whole kind of undercurrent of what's he going to do now, you know, mm. because... I get the feeling that Phil is actually capable of being a really bad dude. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I think that during the season it had a lot of potential for going that way as well, especially with the stuff that he asks Jeffrey to do. Like Jeffrey's just not your everyday butler. Jeffrey's a, still a little bit of a, a, a mercenary. <laughs> I, wanted, I, I want an entire but, fucking uh, episode dedicated to Jeffrey's mercenary past. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, you don't. That is not going to be the fresh prince of Bel Air, unless you're going to find out that <laughs> he's actually the, the prince of a Middle Eastern country and it's a whole different <laughs> sort of thing. I, I want to see, like, Jeffrey working for Blackwater. I want to see Jeffrey as a mercenary travelling around the world, killing people, and then just I going... do not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't want to see that. I mean, unless you're going to, like, you could sort of tear it off with, you know, Pennyworth, Jeffrey as well. Like, <laughs> I, I do not a want to see a, a, a Pennyworth for this version of Jeffrey just because Pennyworth. Oh, but we know Jeffrey man. fucks. <laughs> oh, yeah. This Jeffrey fucks and fucks hard. <laughs> okay. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I, I like I like that character, and I, I want. Was, uh, was I, there any? Because at the end of it, he's fired, and you're like, "Fuck! Yeah. How do how do we bring him back? That's that's a really important. Like, I told how much you not. Dirt does he have on Phil? And like now he could be like going <laughs> the other way. All the dirt. Like, yeah. Well, somebody yeah. like this this uh, lecture is like, what what's going to happen with him? And I was like, what if he? I think he. I mean, he has to come back into the show because. Holy shit! You need Jeffrey, mm. but how do you bring him back in? And I was like, maybe he's working for someone else. Mm. And he's like, no, no, Jeffrey's too loyal. And I'm like, I think Jeffrey is goes he? where the fucking dollar is. Yeah. 
With, oh, maybe maybe we could find that'd be fun. We'll just have some sort of anti. Um, uh, I was going to say Huxtables. That's a totally different thing. Uh, <laughs> a, a different sort of family, like the the anti banks family that Jeffrey mm. goes to work for. And just, yeah, there we go. we're writing season two. We've already got it there. No more of this, uh, <laughs> you know, social commentary bullshit. We're just going to be going into the ooh. How do we make them fight? <laughs> yeah, yeah. pretty much yeah, it's like let's make shit hit the fan yeah yeah, yeah well yeah. there were, there were moments with um like the arguments between viv and, and um will's mum where i'm like holy fuck oh yeah like this is not holding back there's some and i really bought that family tension yeah like mm. You know, um, Will's mum's like, fuck you. I, I was the one who stayed here and wiped the, our dying mother's ass. I'm the one who, you know, mm -hmm. helped you go through art school. I'm the one who worked her ass off and you're the one who's a millionaire now. And you're yeah. like, Oof. okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, certain professional jealousies, sure. I mean, this is the thing, like, maybe I didn't get far enough into it, but, like, I do kind of go, why isn't Vi there? Mm. And that's I kind mean, of like, it would it would cost them probably less than the Lexus that they bought Will to set <laughs> Vi up in a, a granny flat out the back. Yeah. And, we're, you know, and she's not like, yeah, Vi isn't a know. terrible person. And there's not a lot really in, like, options given from, like, hey, do you want to stay in Philadelphia? Which, sure, pretty good sandwich. Or <laughs> come and live well, I mean, on the she grounds looks like of she's my a, a frontline nurse. Like, yeah. Like, if anybody wants to escape a hard knock life, you'd think it would be Vi as well. Like, sure, and she could probably end up becoming a very uh, wealthy private nurse for many of the troubled teens that this yeah. show has in it. You know, though. Like, oh, this. See, when, they just haven't thought it out, Quinny. No, no, no. It's just when, <laughs> like, the episodes where she does come to to Bel Air, um, and it's you know all about Will's birthday and everything. You see, things don't go well. Like no. she is, she is not comfortable in that place, and like there is so much bad blood, you know, mm. between her and, and um, Viv, that like there's probably a real good reason that she's not out there full time. Yeah, I got very strong vibes that there's a lot of animosity about the money, yep. and uh, I. Yeah, I don't think she would be comfortable being taken care of. Mm. Uh, I think she's got a lot of pride because yep. there was a lot of jealousy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was actually very uncomfortable to Super watch. Super uncomfortable. Yeah. It's like here is someone that is not happy um, with you know, their means and uh, is making a very vocal point about somebody else rubbing it in their face. <laughs> so there's like no virtue whatsoever in Vi. <laughs> no, she, no, no virtue, but also, and I, I like the fact that the arguments between them, none of it, neither of them's right. Like, no, Viv's also being a bit of a bitch about it too. And you're like, oh, fucking <laughs> yeah. Hell. yeah, no, there's a lot of butting heads. It was but, very uncomfortable to watch that, yeah. that argument. <laughs> uh, I, I, I kind of understood that too. Is like, uh, familial arguments, there are no winners. At least that's presented in the right way. Is they didn't make either of them out to be the same. Um, no, that's the thing. No. Like I can see exactly where Vi's coming from, but she's not going about it the right way. No. Yeah. Technically, yeah. who knows? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, like there's some really, really interesting character stuff there, and it's it's good shit. Um, yeah. And there's uh, the big question that I had is where we think we're going to go. With so the um, Will's father is a guy called Luke, I think it is Lou. Lou, sorry. Um, mm -hmm. so when Lou shows up, there is a big question mark as to what's going to happen with him, but also what he did. Like, why yeah. is he such a bad dude? Like, because the family has been like, no, we don't want Lou anywhere near anyone. So yeah, it's because he had a, like... it's, it's, it's because he had a career in comedy. <laughs> it's a failed it's career. He's fucking... a failed comedian. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like, this that, guy that, made that white movie. girls. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's hold it against him. <laughs> I think we no, finally found think... the answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, no, he's got some terrible films. Um, he was in a film oh. called uh, Sex Tuplets. Ew. Oh, no. And he was in G.I. Jew, Rise Cobra. <gasps> That's why they got rid of him. G.I. Jew? G.I. Jew. I'm like, I don't know that parody version. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget, though, Marlon Wayans was also in Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, oh no. fuck, he was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So many crimes against film. <laughs> yeah. And scary movie and scary movie, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, the, well, the now, worst now of we know. The Wayan brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Osman in 89, you made a GI Jew joke, and now you're going to get slapped. <laughs> Not going down that road. I won't dig the no. shit. <laughs> We're taking Even the high with road. The Will here. Smith stuff? Come on. We're taking the high road, <sighs> Quiddy. No, I've no, never absolutely. taken the high road in my fucking life. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll ask this question then, Quiddy, in regards to that whole incident. I like, so who did win best documentary? Yeah. Yeah. No one gives a shit about an Oscar winner after that. No, no. It's why, very why annoying. We fuck up that Oscars, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Good chat. Right. It's good chat. Always. It's lovely week. to talk to you guys. Yeah, uh, we're week. not talking, we're not talking about before Yang. We're talking after Yang. Oh, after Yang. After oh. Yang. We I hope you guys in yet. the chat get some time to go and watch that movie. Yeah. Um, it's very. Please, it's, it, please do the homework before next week because I think you guys yeah. will get a lot of enjoyment. Out I'm going to try. I just don't know when or where a, I'm going to find it. It's a different. It's At a different cinema. change of pace. Uh, yeah, but you can check out After Yang in cinemas, um, and if you can check it out, it's going to be an interesting chat. I have some opinions, mm. Mm. And, and then and, on... and the and the hottest of hot takes, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. blistering. In fact, um, yeah. uh, Karina is asking the question: Are we going to do a podcast on every everything everywhere all at once? I really want to. Oh, um, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. We wanted to. Yeah. We just we didn't get a chance to see it, and I was like, "Damn it, it's out!" And then it's going to come out, and we'll get there. But and we've... everybody is raving about it and saying amazing mm. things, and I'm like, "Fuck, I really want to watch that." So that yeah. is very high on well, the list. Quinny, I've got to say, we haven't put up the May schedule yet. We have written it, but there is a you could do that as your Quinny's choice for the 17th ah. of May. You could choose well, then that. That's that up to you. May well do that. Um, I'll also say, so next week on the 26th is After Yang, and on the 29th we are doing Animates. The, re the triumphant return of Animates. Hey. What, are um, you, what which, is it this time? Is it, is it giant robots? Please no, tell me what it is so I can write yeah, it. No, no. <laughs> it's going backwards and forwards and here and there and everywhere. Um, and because uh, today was released uh, the... On HBO Max, the version of The Batman, meaning I finally will get a chance to watch it, we're going to do Batman animated series. Oh, Z -Z -Z -Z. perfect. Okay, yeah. good. So we'll oh. be choosing our favourite version of The Batman from whichever animated series and talking about that. And as usual, there will be a whole bunch of other weird shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so that so is Friday the 29th. Um, check, it, check it out. So yeah, but come back next Tuesday for after Yang. Yes, yes, yes. Um, looking yes. forward to uh, hopefully getting a chance to do that. Are we all watching yeah. Moon Knight? I know Dion has to go, but I, I just want to. Uh, are we? Uh, do we all have opinions about Moon Knight? Yes. Yes. It's it's losing me. It's losing me. <laughs> I was with it, and now Episode it's going three. away from me. A little bit messy. I had. To, I must agree. Episode yep. three, very messy. Yeah, all but, over uh, the shop. Yeah. I was like, oh, uh, no, what are you doing? Uh, I, I need, it needs a little bit more action in my action hero, please. Okay. Yeah. Come on, it set up some really good things where in the first episode where he blanked out and then he did some, like, there was obviously some amazingly cool shit that happened when he blanked mm. out. And then when it's starting to show that, it's like, this isn't worth the blanking out. Mm. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, 
anyway, we're going to be talking about that one in early May. So uh, yes, keep your keep your eyes glued. Right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It has been an absolute pleasure. Thanks, everyone. Um, I'm going to uh, finish with the most appropriate outro that I, I possibly could. Um, so uh, thank you. I'm not sure whether we're going to, we may try and um, raid somebody else. If we don't, you know what? You're going to live this long, happy life with this song. Take a minute, just sit right there. I'll tell you how I became the prince of a town called Bel Air. In West Philadelphia, born and raised on the playground is where I spent most of my days. Chilling out, maxing, relaxing, all cool and all shooting some b ball outside of the school. When a couple of guys who were up to no good started making trouble in my neighborhood, I got in one little fight and my mom got scared. I said, you're moving with your auntie and uncle in Bel Air. I begged and pleaded with her day after day, but she packed my suitcase and sent me on my way. She gave me a kiss and then she gave me my ticket. I put my Walkman on and said, I might as well kick it. First class, yo, this is bad. Drinking orange juice out of a champagne glass. Is this what the people of Bel Air living like? Hmm, this might be all right. I whistled for a cab and when it came near, the license plate said fresh and it had dice in the mirror. If anything, I could say that this cab was rare, but I thought, nah, forget it. Yo, home to Bel Air. I pulled up to the house about seven or eight and I yelled to the cabbie, yo home, smell you later. Looked at my kingdom, I was finally there to sit on my throne as the Prince of Bel Air.